All right. All right, Gwen, we're going to do this one more time. Now, when is Starship going to be launching? Starship will launch sometime in 2020. No, no, that's what I said before. Let's do this again. When is Starship going to be launching? Starship will be launching in July of 2021. No, no, Gwen, no. That was last year. Let's do it again. When will Starship be launching? Starship will be launching in July of 2022. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Now, give it to me one more time. Starship will be launching in... Wait a minute. What are you doing, Elon? Why is this thing hooked up to my head? Is this a Neuralink? (laughs) <laughs> hey, Gwen, how you doing? And what's that sitting over there? Is that a Princess Leia gold bikini? Uh... Elon, get back here. Get back here. I'm not going to hit you with this claw hammer. Really? Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. So uh, I hope people appreciate my humor. And once again, uh, no, meant is no insult to Elon or to Starship or anything like that. Um, but I mean, all of us, I think, should be pretty used to what's been going on right now. And just to be 100% clear, I believe that Starship is the best concept we have right now for an interplanetary transport. It is the only rocket, the only ship that has a realistic chance of taking humanity in large numbers to any other planet. I very much believe in what Elon is trying to accomplish, and I really hope that it works out for him. And, by the way, if you occasionally hear a poodle uh, barking in the background, well, that's because I have new neighbors here uh, in my place in uh, here in Plymouth. Um, so, and one other quick note I wanted to mention to you guys, what is Starship most likely to be taking up here during its uh, first flight, or at least its first real commercial flight? Satellites, right? Has anybody watched a satellite integration process? Well, I have. And just very recently, satellite integration in a clean room, really intriguing process. And if you like space flight, you might want to check that out. And I have the link to that video at in the uh, at the end of this video. Yeah, it's Virgin Orbit, not SpaceX, but the principle is essentially the same and you might enjoy it. In any event, let's move on. So, you know, once again, we're talking about November, something that uh, we've heard from Elon in terms of its high highly likely that Starship will be ready for an orbital flight in November. And even though Elon said similar things in July of last year, and indeed July of this year anyway, talking about how the booster and orbiter would be ready in July, and then another one in August, another one the month after that, so on and so forth, the media is completely buying into this, or for the most part, I mean, they are saying Elon Musk says, but if you dive into the text of most of these releases, even things like Space News and Space.com, who I really respect, none of them talk about the fact that Elon's been saying these things for a couple of years now. And, uh, you know, at what point do we really start questioning it? And even I kind of bought into that concept for a while, released a video talking about how it was possible, I believed it was possible, for Starship to fly in November. Given recent events, however, I no longer believe that. And I'm actually a little disappointed with myself that I ever did believe it. And here's why. 
Starship is still not mature enough for us to be making these kinds of predictions, and we saw that in recent events. It hasn't been widely talked about, but there was a video released by a channel called Scientia or something like that. Not a bad channel. It's got some pre, like, uh, I don't know, simulated vocals, robot vocals, whatever you call those things. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the information seems to be very sound and really goes according to a lot of the observational data that's being gathered by the you know the various tank watchers out there but nevertheless um there was a lot of issues while they were trying to stack starship they couldn't get the thing properly aligned um there were a number of issues during that and even when they did get it properly aligned they tried to do a cryogenic test and that was swiftly canceled and just to be clear a cryogenic test is not a wet rehearsal. That's just, you know, testing fuel pressure, testing everything in the fuel tanks, fuel lines, etc., to make sure that everything's going to be able to hold up under the given pressure. Whereas a wet rehearsal is a complete, complete fueling and integration of all of the systems between the orbiter and the booster and simulating a countdown all the way down to maybe T minus 30 or something like that. So that is a much more robust and comprehensive test. And frankly, I don't think we're anywhere near that yet. Um, at least not close enough to where we're going to see static fires on the full stack happening very soon. And I'll tell you why. We first need to look at the difference in philosophies between SLS and Starship. The whole idea behind Starship is what's typical of NASA and really was typical all the way back to the Apollo era. It's called All Up Testing and it's fairly well documented amongst the community of test engineers. You approach each piece of equipment, test article or not, and test it to exhaustion like it's mission hardware. It generates a lot of ground test data, but it's assumes that the design was correct in the first place. And as I said, it was direct developed in the 1960s to get Saturn and other boosters back on schedule, and SLS was designed under the same principle. It had a full finalized design before entering its test phase, whereas SpaceX did not. And this one is one of the things that really, really pisses me off about SLS and really should aggravate everybody else. This is a rocket that was tested to exhaustion before it even even rolled out to the pad, and yet it's still having issues. Although, to be fair, the issues are mostly with the ground systems and the launch tower, not with the rocket itself, which is one of the reasons I believe that once it actually takes off, it has a good chance of successfully completing its mission. Assuming, of course, that those solid rocket boosters don't blow up because they've been stacked a year longer than they should have been. Now, Starship is designed on an entirely different principle. Most of the hardware hasn't been fully tested yet, and certainly not integrated together. All of this is still a work in progress. It's a very much still a test article, not a completed rocket like SLS. Therefore, we can expect there to be problems during every step of the way. There should be problems with the wet dress rehearsal. There should certainly be problems with some of the static fires, especially when they try to fire up all 33 engines, and there may indeed be problems in flight. One of the reasons why I think, think this thing may fly suborbital, just to prove its flight worthiness, before the FAA allows it to actually go to orbit. And some of this, by the way, is borne out in some of the licenses that SpaceX recently received. For example, yesterday they received a notification from the FCC granting them a license simply to provide additional telemetry with a backup provider, and the dates of that license extend through April of next year. Again, it's a six-month license, so who knows, but it gives SpaceX the flexibility to launch all the way up until the middle of April, and perhaps further if they decide to issue an extension. 
And so here's why we can't expect miracles out of SpaceX and Starship. All of these components haven't been fully tested and all of them would have to work perfectly during the wet rehearsal. Oh, incidentally, some engines are missing from Booster 7 right now, again suggesting that they're not really ready to send this thing into orbit anytime soon. But everything would have to work perfectly during the wet dress or rehearsal in terms not only of fuel pressure in the fueling process, but all of the system's integration between the booster and the orbiter. That's a lot to expect. And then everything in the static fires, especially with this extremely complicated and immensely powerful propulsion system, all of that would have to work perfectly as well. That is simply not going to happen by the end of November. And if SpaceX pushes this process too far, they could blow a rocket up on the pad. And that is a much more serious consequence than blowing up something like SN9 or SN10. It will immolate a very huge region of a protected area, something that will, as I've mentioned many times before, put SpaceX on a state of extended hold, if not permanent hold, due to all the problems that will be created in court by environmental protection agencies and others. And this time, I think they would have a decent chance of winning if SpaceX creates a lot lot of damage in the area. So all of that being the case, SpaceX has to proceed with caution. They have to test every component, and if there's any problems, those components have to be replaced, and in some cases, completely redesigned. This is a very, very intricate process. So why does Elon keep giving us these dates? <sighs> I'm afraid only Elon really knows that. I think he's still just kind of setting aggressive expectations for his engineers and technicians. He's telling them that he really wants to get to Mars as quickly as possible. He really wants Starship to get to orbit as quickly as possible. And we should set the most aggressive expectations possible. And if we don't reach them, that's okay. But we should at least be striving to achieve them. That's not a bad philosophy as long as the fans and the tank watchers understand that that's what's really going on right now. Not that Elon keeps making promises that he can't keep. So does this mean that I absolutely believe that November is impossible? Well, once again, no, not 100%. And for a lot of the same reasons, as much as we watch this stuff and as much as the tank watchers and others, people who many of which are very experienced in engineering, analyze the hell out of this, really none of us has the slightest idea how close SpaceX actually is to an orbital launch. SpaceX, in spite of the fact that they put all their equipment and their rockets out in plain view, they're still very secretive in many ways. They're not telling any of us what's really going on and when it's really likely that they're going to be sending Starship to orbit. And there's lots of good reasons for that. You don't want to telegraph your flagship's you know, vessel and how quickly it's going to get to orbit to all of your competitors. And SpaceX also has to seriously consider their relationship with NASA because they have obligations to deliver an effective human landing system very soon, 2025, maybe 2026, assuming SLS does actually get off the ground and actually does perform, which who knows, it might, and if it does, SpaceX is going to be really behind the eight ball if Starship doesn't get to orbit for a while, and especially if it doesn't demonstrate an effective cadence of launches for refueling purposes. So yeah, there are many, many things at stake right now and many reasons why SpaceX should not be really making it extremely clear as to when they are really going to be launching. So I I mean, are they playing a deception game? Well, once again, I'm not going to say that about Elon. I'm not going to come out and say he's lying to us or anything like that. Once again, I think he's just being as aggressively optimistic as he always is. He's painting a picture of how he would like things to be, and he certainly wants to see Starship take to flight as rapidly as possible. This is the keystone of his long-term plan of taking the human race to Mars. With 
without Starship, his plan is sunk. So obviously, he wants it to take off as rapidly as possible. However, for the rest of us, space flight enthusiasts, and especially for the space flight media, we really need to take all of Elon's tweets for what they are something that should be taken with a serious grain of salt. Because after all of these dates that he's fed to us at this point, I mean, how many times are you going to cry wolf? The guy has an objective, an agenda behind these dates. I think it's a good one, really, to push his people as quickly as possible. But in terms of actually giving us a solid expectation as to when Starship is really going to orbit, Come on, we all know that this isn't true. So I hope you enjoyed all of this. Once again, I'm going to be doing a live stream today talking about the possibility of staying longer. It seems unlikely. I'd love to see the launch, but at the same time, you guys have been extremely generous supporters already. You've done more than enough. And, you know, I would need to stay here till the end of October, which would probably take several hundred more dollars. Like I say, I just feel like you guys have definitely done more than enough, and I really, really appreciate it. Long term, once again, my objective is to have 1% of my subscribers become Patreon supporters at some level. If that were to happen, it would certainly solve all of my problems, but this is the last time that I'm going to be talking about this for at least a month. I may talk about it during my live stream today, but that's it. After that, I'm not going to bore you with my the state of my channel anymore. The economy's bad. Everybody's is having a rough time, and I'm just going to keep bringing you good content. So let's see what happens with Starship. Let's keep our expectations realistic. Stop obsessing over Elon's tweets. Please like, please subscribe. I'm not getting a tattoo without 100,000 subscribers, and who knows, it could very well happen. So please subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell button, and as always, stay angry about space.